Hello Hotis and welcome to my second videos. Today I want to be talking about how to set up the best Linux media center possible. Now that my home office is no longer in the living room, uh, I'm looking for a new way to consume media from the couch. And I've been exploring various options such as a Raspberry Pi, an Amazon Fire TV or a secondhand thin client. In this table here I have rated the capabilities of each approach. And let me be the first to say that if you want to just watch Netflix, just get the Fire TV because it has good support for it and the DRM for Netflix makes it hard to run on other systems. But if you would also want to do other things, then yes, you can sideload Steam, Link and RetroArch and Kodi, but the storage and CPU are very weak, so they're not very capable. And of course, Steam Link only allows you to stream games and not play them on a device. So for other things, it's not ideal. And the Raspberry Pi, there are several popular living room distributions, such as RetroPie and LibreALEC. And while RetroPie is great for re uh, RetroArch gaming, it's not great for anything else. And LED LibreALEC just does what it says on the tin, it's just enough OS for Kodi. And Kodi is great for playing cable TV or local media, and it also comes with its own RetroArch front-end. And this one works great for older games, but it doesn't support OpenGL, so it doesn't support any of the newer uh, fifth-generation consoles like PlayStation or Nintendo. And just enough OS is also not enough for Steam or Firefox, so you can't really do anything else with it. And I also found that the add-ons for streaming sites are kind of disappointing with really poor user experience. So what I want to do is take a thin client and put enough OS on it to run Steam and RetroArch and Kodi and Firefox and then try to get other streaming platforms working as well. And to do this, I want to use Plasma Big Screen, which is uh, KDE's TV interface, and then add all the other things to it. So for this video, first we'll start by choosing the right hardware. Then I want to install KDE, Kubuntu, and then we'll install Plasma Big Screen and down all the other components such as Kodi, Steam, RetroArch, and maybe even Waydroid. And then we'll make sure they all work with GamePad and show a demonstration. For my own hardware, I set up on the Lenovo ThinkCenter M720Q that I had brought for another project. But I highly recommend checking out Project Tiny Mini Micro by Serve the Home, who reviewed a ton of Think clients. Um, you can also just type Thin Client in eBay and pick up something that matches your budget. There are Thin Clients that go for less than the Raspberry Pi, but they might not be great for like gaming or watching 4K videos. So the first step is of course to install Kubuntu on the device. And for that we need to download the ISO from the Ubuntu website. And then the official instructions recommend that you use Belana Etcher which is a simple drag and drop interface. You can just drop the ESO and select your drive and then format it. Um, but if you regularly use USB drives with Linux or other operating systems, I recommend checking out Ventoy, which is like a bootloader for USB drives where you can just drop the ESO into the USB drive and you can just sort of select it from a menu. It's very neat. Um, to boot from your USB, you need to select it from your boot menu and sometimes you need to like press a key to enter it or go into settings of the BIOS to uh, prioritize USB over your internal storage. Uh, this depends a bit on your hardware, so I can't really give advice on that. Um, once you have done that though, you can just follow the instructions of the installation wizard and install Kubuntu. The only thing I would recommend is selecting login automatically without asking for a password, because when you have a controller, it's not very convenient to enter your password every time. The first thing I install is actually Steam for no particular reason and there are conflicting information on how to do it but the best way I found is to just go to their website and get the official Debian package and you can just open that with discover and press install and everything will just take care of itself. On the first launch you will get a prompt though to install extra dependencies because Steam depends on some 32-bit libraries and they aren't installed by default so just press enter a few times and then you will install them and proceed 
And then after Steam starts, the main thing we want to do for now is go to settings and to interface and enable start Steam in big picture mode to launch a TV interface by default. To install Plasma Big Screen, open console and run sudo apt install Plasma Big Screen. Then you need to enter your root password and confirm the prompt. Then we need to log out and log in again, but make sure to select the X11 version of Plasma Big Screen uh, and more about the Wayland version later. And to make Big Screen the default session, open System Settings and then go to Login Screen Settings and then click on Behavior. From there, you can select default session, I'll select automatic login if you didn't do this during the setup. And once you're done, apply the changes and reboot the system to make sure you're automatically logged into the correct session. Before we install Kodi, we need to make a little detour to set up Flatpak. Because the Ubuntu patch for Kodi is a bit outdated and broken, so we can avoid a lot of trouble by installing the official Flatpak package. So we open console again and run sudo apt install flatpak, enter the password and confirm the prompt. And then we do the same for plasma discover backend flatpak to allow us to easily install flatpak packages from discover. And the actual thing we need to add is also the repository for flathub, which is this command like flatpak remote add blah 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 blah. And then we need to reboot. And after the reboot, we can start to install Flathub packages from Discover. And if you search for coding now, you'll see there are several versions listed. And we need to scroll down to find the Flatpak one and press install on it. After that's done, you can now start coding and install some add-ons by going to settings, add-ons and search. And for example, you can type in YouTube, press install and OK, and then you're done. For third party like add-ons like Netflix or Elementum, you need to download their repository from the internet somewhere and then select install from zip file. The first time you do this, you'll be prompted to enable unknown sources and settings and again, warned about the grave security risk that you're unleashing. But if you accept the risk, then you can now browse for the zip file of your extension and inst install the custom repository. After installing the repository, go back to install from repository and select the repository you added, browse the add-on and press install. Installing RetroArch is much the same as installing Kodi. We need to open Discover, search for RetroArch and make sure to select the Flatpak version because again, the Debian package is outdated and broken, so don't do that one. Now we can launch RetroArch and configure everything. Um, first of all, we want to go to Settings, Video, Full Screen Mode, enable Start in Full Screen Mode to start in Full Screen Mode. Then we need to go back to the main menu and open the Online Updater. And here we can run update controller profiles. So that will install profiles for your controller so we can control RetroArch with it. And then we can open core downloader and then select any emulator cores that we want to use. And, and in my case, there was one other step that I had to do in the settings and input and retro pad binds, port one controls, the device index was set wrong. So you need to make sure this is actually set to your controller that you're using to control RetroArch. As I mentioned, the Kodi add-ons for streaming platforms like YouTube or Netflix don't always offer a great experience. So there might be cases where you'd rather use the Android apps for these platforms. However, most of these streaming platforms use extensive DRM schemes and they don't seem to work on Android easily. And also TV stuff on Android is kind of strange. So I'm still exploring all the options here. Um, but for now, if you want to try using Android for something, I'll point out that you need to install Plasma Workspace Wayland package so that you, the Wayland big screen session uh, works at startup because as the name implies, Waydroid only works on Wayland. And I do plan to make a video about Waydroid in the future, so um, subscribe for that and let me know in the comments which apps I should cover. Now that we have all our apps set up, we need to actually make sure that they work with the controller. So to do this, we need to open console again and run sudo apt install plasma remote controllers. And this will install a service that translates input from a TV remote or gamepad to key presses. 
The upside of this approach is that it provides a rudimentary control of any app with keyboard support. The downside is for an app like Steam or Kodi or RetroArch, which has native gamepad support, it will now register both keypad and keyboard double inputs. And the solution is rather clumsy. We need to log out of our big screen session and log into a regular desktop Plasma session because there's a tray icon at the bottom that you can inhibit apps from being remote controlled. So we need to launch all our big screen apps like Steam and Kodi and such. And then we need to open the start menu by pressing the meta start command key. And then if you right click this tray icon, you can check the check mark and then it will inhibit remote control for these apps. And this includes individual Steam games but it does not inf include individual retro art games. So to sum it up, we installed Kubuntu with Plasma and Big Screen, and then we installed Steam, Kodi, and RetroArch, and we made everything GamePad compatible. And the, all that is left now is to enjoy the demo, and then I will see you in the next video. Bye. It's me, Mario! Hello! Okie dokie! Dear Mario, please come to the castle. I have baked a cake for you. Yours truly, Princess Toadstool. Peach! Response. Oh, brilliant. You made Template. it. Well done. Follow me. Response. You're going to love this. Almost there. Response. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh. 
Ta-da! Only the turret control center. Thank you very much.